As we continue our fool study, we open up today the first part of Proverbs, a book of wisdom written by a man who obtained wisdom by God. And Proverbs being a study of wisdom, we will quite study the fool through Proverbs. On our 34th fool, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And this verse classifies into two classifications, the saved and the, un and the lost. And anybody who's involved in a public ministry has dealt with these fools. You present them with the, with the gospel, the means of salvation brought by God through Jesus Christ alone. And when they will not adhere to what God has told them to do and have do not the fear of hell or the wrath of God, the Bible classifies them as a fool. As with a, a saved person, when the Bible declares to a Christian, you go to all the world and preach the gospel, and they do not, they don't fear the loss of crowns and rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. When the fact is that the scriptures are violated, as Adam did, when God told him, thou shalt not eat of the fruit, and he did, that's foolish. And that's the first fool we come up in the book of Proverbs, a wisdom book. is when people will not fear God, lost, or saved. We do not do what God tells us to do, and I think we've all come in, into that. I think at all times of our life, we have become the fool because we don't obey God. Proverbs one twenty two. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Again, now wisdom speaking about here, wisdom personified, verse 20, all the way down to 33, would be likened to a, a man who is in a public ministry, witnessing, preaching, passing out gospel tracts, opening a Bible with somebody. And I quote this verse often as I street preach, that this is the reason for a public ministry. And there are three aspects of people that we will come across is the simple, the scorning, and ones that hate knowledge. Now we go back to our first fool, one six to one, I mean, one five, one seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then when we read this verse here, the fool hates knowledge. So, a person of education with knowledge can be a fool. They may know how to run a car, how to drive a car. They may know how to change a light bulb. They may know how to shop. They may know how to do a profession. But if they do not have the knowledge of the holy, then they are fools. When you tell them what God expects from them, whether a Bible study, whether a, a public ministry, or from a pulpit, or one-on-one -on -one talking with somebody, and they they take that knowledge and refute it, and rebuke it, I mean, rebuke it, and refuse, you're dealing with a fool. And it's, again, it's saved or lost. You can be a saved fool. When they do not obey what the Word of God says, they're foolish. Proverbs 132. So much. Again, dealing with wisdom going out in the streets witnessing of God's ways, it says in 132. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Well, that's kind of harsh. The fools prosper. 
whatever he prospers in will end in destruction. Why? Because they will have nothing to do with God. And what we, what we have put ourselves in chapter 1 already is they will not fear and they will not get or seek after the knowledge of God. And it ends for the Christian at wood, hay, or stubble of ashes in the judgment seat of Christ. Or for the lost man, it ends up in the lake of fire that burneth forever. Now for the saved man, I mean, he's not going to go to hell. But he's got new Jerusalem and glory in the eternal life afterwards. And he's lost rewards. And you got the lost man who will go to hell and just everything is lost. A place of torment for his foolishness. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 35. 335. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. It is a shame versus glory. Now, which would you choose? If I were to approach you at any given time, at any given moment without knowing, and I said up to you, hey, would you rather have shame or would you have glory? And your average common man will say, hell, I want glory. I don't want to be shamed. Who wants that? But... The wise will inherit glory, but the shame shall be the promotion of fools. And who does not want a promotion? Some work at their job for the, to get to the next seat. Some will do what they can do to get to the next ladder. Some will do to get to that next office. Some will go to a boss and say, you know, I, I think I need a raise. And here's why I need a raise. Promotion. And when we look at the word promotion, we're looking at, hey, it's an advancement. It's a better. It's an accomplishment. But when we look at the fool in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35, his promotion, his betterment, the best thing he can get is shame. Wow. Wow. I mean, would you be happy to come home and tell your family, today at work I got shame? Or would you say, hey, I got a promotion? I've got a document on the wall, a piece of paper that says, I am certified a shame for being a fool. And is there not times that wrong, rightfully, wrongfully, that we have been made ashamed, not for doing right, but doing for wrong. Have we not ever answered a question wrongly? Have we not ever done something wrong? And the attitude that came from that and the reward from doing wrong came shame. And then that declared to us, according to the Bible, we are fools. So promotion of shame is to that for what is foolish. And the promotion for a full Christian that will not obey the word of God, his promotion is not a crown or a reward, it is a loss. And that his shame, his promotion would be, he's got a pile of ashes. And there's no gold, there's no silver, there's no promo there's no precious stone and the and the promotion of the fool who will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved will be hell what a shame to end up in hell and yet that rich man in Luke chapter uh, 16 he didn't show any shame but will we not think that it is a shame to enter into hell Never to come out. So the thing about it, promotions, the advancement, and the degree 
and the, the accomplishment of being ashamed. And it's happened to all of us. I've had events in my life where I became ashamed. It's because I've done something wrong. I'm a fool. There have been times I hated knowledge. I'm a fool. There are times that I did not fear God. I played a fool. It's amazing how we are up to the 37th fool in the Bible and how many are in my Christian life. How many were before I was saved that are now under the blood? The Bible says, study show thyself approved on a God of man that right. Oh, let's go there. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.20. Being ashamed now is I'm misquoting the verse. Second Timothy 2 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are going to be people saved or lost at either judgment. The judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. <coughs> excuse me. They'll be made ashamed. They will be foolish in their conduct today by not rightly dividing the word of truth, who have mystified the scriptures, who have changed and added and subtracted and to the to the scriptures, who have produced a modern Bible, who has had a heretic uh, church or lesson or doctrine, who has gone the ways of an occult, being foolish by changing the word of God, by misusing the word of God, by being deceitful, by being a false prophet. They have are a fool and their shame will come as a promotion when God judges them for their deceitfulness. To Proverbs chapter 7 verse 22. 722. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Now, what we're looking at here, Solomon's writing. He's about writing about a woman, a strange woman that this young man is going after. He shouldn't. And verses 5 to 22. It's a strange woman. He should not be doing it. And the, and the conduct of this verse here speaks about stocks. Now, what stocks were in the old times, if you've seen pictures of them, there'd be this, this bolt, this wood. It's cut in half. It's got holes. Usually three of them. And what you do is you put one arm in a hole, you put the other arm in a hole, and you put your neck. And they put the, the piece of wood down, and they would lock it, and you would just stand there with your arms and your head out at a public disgrace in the public village or the green. And people were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do to you outside of death or severe harm. They would throw eggs and rotten vegetables. They would salt you. It was a thing to stand here. I am standing here, and I had played the fool, and I need correction. And it was supposed to be that I am not going to put myself in this condition no more. I am not going to be made ashamed publicly before all the seed that I am sit standing here in these stocks because I have done something wrong. I have played the fool. And it's supposed to be a harassment. It's supposed to be mockery. It's supposed to be that I don't want to do this again. And the public would play part in your punishment. It's a public dis display of the sentence of law. And sometimes even your feet were put in stocks. And it would be another thing if not publicly out in the public square, green, you would be in jail, handcuffed, and feet cuffed, and you couldn't go nowhere but where you were. It's a punishment of fools that you are confined. 
You have no more freedom as much as you're being the stocks in the public green. You can't go where you want to go. You can't hide your crime. You can't hide the punishment when you're putting those stocks. And it's to declare, hey, you've done wrong. You're a fool. Have we not ever done wrong? Now, we may not have been putting stocks. Maybe some of us that were listening to this has been arrested in handcuffs. I don't think I've ever been put in handcuffs. I don't have ever been in jail. I should have been. I can think a couple times I should have been in jail. Came close once. And this is a complete opposite of what the correction is today that in America because they go to jail, they get their luxury, they get their sports, they get their food, they get their, their heating elements, they get their air conditioning, they get their television, they get a bed to stay, they get a chair, they get the paper. They get It's not a correction. It's not a shame to go to jail today. Correction is to show forth you are a fool and fools need to change. Fools need to repent. They need to fear God. Problem with America today, they promote foolishness. They allow it to happen. And that's wrong. And everybody who is involved with a uncorrectional system that is applied today in the past, in the present, and the future are going to stand God Stand before God one day, and they're going to have to give an account why that fool was given privileges that he ought not to have. Where the Bible says the fool is supposed to be punished. To see that he is a fool. And to repent and get right. That's opposite today. Uh, shame. Worse than jail. For all to see. It's a, again, as a public viewing of the stocks. And when it mentions stocks, it, it's that wooden platform where you would be put out in the open and you would be receiving end of rotten fruit, eggs, and just added to more shame. Here you'd be standing there and, and there, was a, there was a set lot of time for you to be there and you would have stuff hanging off you. Man, will be if any of your family members saw you there. Will be if any of your friends or your your coworker. Well, what are you doing there? It would be the fact is to see see somebody in those stocks would be you're a criminal, you're a fool. Proverbs eight five. Proverbs eight five. Here for I will speak of excellent things. For the opening of my lips shall be right things. Uh, eight five. Oh, I read eight six. Eight five. Oh, ye simple, understand. So simple lacks understanding. Wisdom. Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. They don't know wisdom to be wise. And ye fool, be of an understanding heart. So fools lack understanding. Now let's let's look at it like this, okay? Uh, trying to get ready. Knowledge, okay, here we go. Knowledge is what you know. I know how to start a car or truck. Wisdom is the ability to put knowledge in practice. I know how to start a car. I know how to put it. R, reverse, I know how to put it in D and drive, or one, two, three, four. I know how to shift. Been a long time, but I've, I've driven a manual transmission. All right, so I have taken my knowledge of learning how to drive a car, and I'm driving the car, I'm going down the road. Understanding in the Bible is your relationship to God. Okay? Now, the understanding relationship to God is, I know how to start the car. I know how to drive the car. I know how to use the car. And I take the car, my knowledge of, and my wisdom how to, and I will go pick up people for church. I will take my car somewhere where I can present the gospel. I will take my car somewhere 
for God. A fool may know how to do something. A fool may how to apply the knowledge he knows, but he will not put it to God. Now, the fool may know money buys things. The fool may know how to make money. But the fool will not give money to God. He will not give his car to God. A fool knows that a man and a woman make children, and a fool can apply his life to have children, but he won't give his children to God. A fool may know that God is, he's God. He may have a kind of knowledge that he doesn't fear that God's all powerful, but he's not going to give himself to God. That's foolish. That's foolish. So a request for fools to get understanding, knowledge, is what you know. Wisdom, how, how, to, how to use what you know. And understanding is a relationship to God. Fools know things. They just don't know God. Fools have understanding. They just don't want to understand God. And then thus... What can he be wise about? Worldly wise meant? Where's that going to get you in eternity? When the world and everything, the earth and all that's folded up and melted with fervent heat. Fools, uh, fools. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. Oh, look at that. Is that not a plain, clear understanding? Does the Bible say for us to remain foolish? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. It says forsake it. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Life is not obtained by foolishness. Ensure life eternal. Everything that's foolish will burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. Everything that's foolish for the lost man will just end up in the flames of the lake of fire forever. Fools forsake God. And accidents happen to fools. A lot of your accidents at home and work are because of foolishness. Because we have taken wisdom, we have taken knowledge, and we have taken understanding, and we have put it off to the to the wayside, and we go about life, uh, happy, joyfully, fooling around, mockery, and all that. We have put safety off. And as a result, of foolishness and accident happens. Safety of the Bible is your faith, your trust, your all and all in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And don't take your eyes off it and keep your eyes on it and keep heading to, to God. When you take your eyes off, you sin. When you forget God, you sin. And that's foolish. And the Bible says, forsake the foolish. Get away from it. Stop doing it. Do it no more. Being unlike. Let's see what we got here. We got a whole bunch of Proverbs more. We're at number. We just finished 40. And Proverbs goes up to. A whole bunch of Proverbs. Uh, yeah, we got. Tons and tons of proverbs, more than more than forty more. So what we're going to do is we're going to it's we're at an even number now, number forty, and we'll stop right there, Proverbs nine six, and let's digest that some. Have we ever told God, or have we ever not feared God by telling God I'm not going to do that? By telling God, you know, I don't care. Let's 
right? But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fools despise wisdom and instruction. Have we ever been instructed and not done? I have. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity and scorners and like scorners and fools hate knowledge? There are people in dead churches today. They're saved. They just don't want to grow. They want to strengthen themselves. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. What's that prosperity? It's destruction. And then the promotion of fools, what's that? Shame. Shame and destruction comes about the life of a fool. A fool will be put into stocks. He will put into confinement because he's a fool. The Bible says fools be of an understanding heart. So you can break away from your foolishness. The Bible says forsake the foolish. So what we've seen today is we have clearly played the fool. And the Bible says get out of it. Stay away from it. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's how you get yourself out of being a fool. You got to listen to the Word of God. You got to obey the Word of God. You got to correctly, rightly divide the Word of God. And that moment when you are made into stocks, you have been caught. Take your punishment. Learn from your punishment and forsake the foolish. Don't do it again. 